All right, so welcome back, everybody. So for this video, I'm going to be talking about strategies uh, for forest shuffle with the Alpine expansion. Now, I did I did uh, strategy videos in the past with just the base game. So if you don't have the expansion but you have the base game, then you can watch those videos. But if you have the expansion already, or you are thinking of getting the expansion, or maybe you just don't know all the new cards from the expansion, the, this video and, 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 and the videos that will come after this will be most helpful indeed of the different types of strategies you can go for when you play this game. Of course, sometimes you can play this game and not be able to pull off any strategy at all because you can't, just can't get the cards you want. For any of your strategies and then you just got a miss mangled mess of various cards but if you can manage to pull this off these are the cards that will work well with the paw strategy with the alpine expansion included so let me talk about this now while you will be focusing on one strategy it's always valid it's always good to work on other strategies in tandem with the strategy you're mainly focusing on. So for this video, we're gonna be focusing on the paw strategy, like I said. So, one of the best trees, the best tree for this strategy is the silver fir tree. Now, any other tree you can get is great, but this one, for instance, is the best, the silver fir tree, because it lets you play a paw animal for free, okay? And then it's, were two points for every every card that's attached to this tree. And what's a good paw animal to play for free, you might be asking? A good one to play is going to be the European Hare, okay? So the European Hare is going to be one of the best cards for this strategy. It, it may not be the best card, but it's going to be one of the best and it's gonna be one of the focuses of your paw strategy, okay? And we'll get to why um, that is as we go along. But you're gonna want as many of these hairs as you possibly can. Now, because they're free to play anyway, getting to play this and this at the same time is still a nice deal, okay? Because you're playing a tree, but then you're also getting to play a hair for free. So this is just a good card to play for free. Okay, that's assuming you can satisfy the binocular needs by discarding two of those types of leaves. But still, it's a good, it's a good first free play for sure. Um, because, because, especially because normally if you don't include the hair, this tree would only score you two, four, six, eight points. But if you could get a few hairs on this tree because hairs can share the same spot, you could get this worth way more than 10 points if you had a bunch of hairs on the left and the right. So it's just a really good card to play with the silver fir tree, and that's the European hair. So the, so that's a, so those are some of the best cards you can play with this strategy. But then what other cards can play the European hair for free? I mean, that, that are also potentially pod animals. That's the European Badger. The European Badger may only give you two points, but it's still helping you score as many points as you possibly can with paw animals, because it is a paw animal. Uh, but it also lets you play a paw animal for free if you satisfy its binocular ability as well. So another good card to play for free, like I said, is a European Hare. Because when you play a card for free, if the mammal you're playing has an ability, you don't get to activate it if you play for free, so the European Hare is just a good card to play for free. Now, if you don't have any European Hares yet, but you wanna get this uh, Red Fox out early, it only, gets you, it only lets you draw a card per European Hare you have, so if you don't have any European Hares yet, or played yet, but you have some in your hand, but you wanna play a paw animal for free with the European Badger, or the silver fir tree, or the fire salamander, the red fox is another good card you could potentially play for free that would work well with the paw strategy. Because one of the things you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna play a lot of these European hares for sure, 
but you also want to play a lot of these red foxes. You're going to want to play more than one if you possibly can if you're going with this strategy. So that's another good potential card you could play for free at the beginning of the game. If you don't have that many hairs or maybe just have one, you know, that's a good way of getting that red fox played early so you don't have to waste the, the amount of cards that you have to discard in order to play it. So that's how that's going to work. Now, while the European Badger and the Silver Fur Tree let you play Mammals for free, another card that lets you play Mammals for free is the Fire Salamander, okay? So the Fire Salamander isn't a paw animal. Yes, it's not. But it is going to go to the bottom of your card, okay? And you want to be well-rounded in your forest, right? That's why other strategies are also good to start sort of work on as well, because you want to have a well-rounded forest. You want to utilize your trees up, down, left, and right. And with the paw strategy, most of the cards are going to be left and right, which means you're going to want something up, up here and down here too. And so the fire salamander not only is going to go down here, but it lets you play a paw animal for free if you satisfy its binocular needs. And hey, if you can get a few of these played to play a few mammals for free, or I mean a few, a few uh, paw animals for free, you could potentially get a lot of extra points with the fire salamander too. But even if you just get one, you're preventing other players from getting a bunch of these. And you're also getting to play a posture paw animal for free, which is going to help you in the long run with this strategy, especially if you play this for free. Okay? So that's another potential card. Now, while uh, that's another potential card that would work well. Now, while the European Hare is a good card to play for free, with the Alpine expansion, we do have new cards, okay? And with that comes new animals. And so one of the new animals with the for Forest Alpine expansion is the Mountain Hare. This counts as a European Hare. Yes, that means that your Red Fox still scores off of this. So if you had this, only this, and you had a Red Fox, that means your Red Fox is getting two points thanks to this one Hare. Of course, it's still worth one point. Now, because this is a mountain hare and not a European hare, it can't share space with the European hares. And you also notice that on the card, while this one says the European hares may share the same spot, any number, these, this does not say that. So if you place this on a tree, it means that there's nothing else that's going to share space with it. That's the downside. But still, it, it adds more potential pot animals that you can play and it adds more potential hares that you can play because while there's still 11 of these European hares, some of them are with, with the red foxes. So what do you do then, right? But then we've got these mountain hares and there are three of these. So if even if you get one of those, it's still nice and is another potential card uh, that, that would work well with this strategy, okay? So while we're saying that you can play a lot of these pod animals for free, a lot of these hares for free with the European hare and the fire salamander and the silver fir tree. Uh, there is other things that you could do besides simply just getting to play these two animals for free. And that is the fly agaric. This is a very strong strategy. This is probably one of the most important cards with the paw strategy because if you can get this played early, you can get a lot of cards because every time you play a card with paw icon on it, you get to draw a card. So if you play this underneath the tree, the, the silver fir tree or just a tree in general, and then you start playing some of these hairs, not only are you getting to play them for free, but now you're getting to draw a card too. So it's a good way of getting more cards for sure. But if you're going to be playing a lot of paw animals, you're going to want to potentially get this fly agaric if you possibly can. Plus, it gives you something else to place underneath the tree for your well-rounded forest. So this is one of the, like I said, the most powerful cards. If you can get this, great. If you can't, that doesn't completely wreck the paw strategy. But once again, if you can get all of these cards that I'm mentioning... Man, you're going to get a ton of points and a lot of cards. So, yes, that's a good card to go with with this strategy, is that uh, 
Fly a Garic. Now, another card that will, will help you play your hairs out and get a lot of your hairs played at once is the mole. Now, the mole is a paw animal, so hey, you're getting you're getting another paw animal in this strategy, but you get to play as many cards as you want by paying their cost. So cards that you can play for free don't cost anything. So this is a this is one of the best cards that you could go with with the paw strategy because it'll help you play your hairs and get them played. So the mole is just a really good card to have. Now, what's some other potential cards that would work well besides the hares and the foxes, okay? And the mushroom and the tree and the badger and the, and then besides these. So another good one that would work well with the paw strategy is going to be the beach marten because the beach marten is going to give you five points for every occupied tree. So if you are satisfying left and right and you're potentially satisfying something below the tree with maybe the mole or um, maybe the uh, fire salamander, you might have some trees that are nearly complete, but you're obviously going to also want to have something above the tree. Are there any good cards that you could do that with? Well, first of all, there is one very essential card with this strategy. So while the fly agaric mushroom is a very essential card, to, for, so that way you can draw cards for all your paw animals, the other essential card that is essential to this strategy is the stag beetle, because it's going to give you points based on the amount of paw animals you have. And there's only two of these in the whole game. Now while that is nice, but not like super powerful, just just the point wise, because unless you had like you know twenty paw animals or something, um, this stag beetle also lets you play a bird for free. That is nice, especially if you're trying to have a well-rounded forest, especially if you're trying to satisfy the beech marten. You're gonna want a well well-rounded forest. So what's a good bird to play for free with the stag beetle? Well, the goshawk has always been the best bird to play for free. However, while this is the best bird to play for free with the stag beetle, unless you're also in, unless you're also going the bird route, which is fine. It's always good to do more than one strategy at a time. If you're going to sort of go uh, sort of like a with a bird strategy with your paw strategy, if you can manage that, the goshawk is a good card to have because you're going to get three points for every bird you have. And if you can get some of the other birds, you know, then, then yeah, that might, that might be a good card to play for free. However, it's not the best card anymore. The best card to play for free with the Stag Beetle is now the Golden Eagle, okay? So the Golden Eagle, it has no ability, so you don't have to worry about that. And while it only costs one card to play, if you can play this one for free, you're gonna get points based on the amount of paw animals you have. So now, now you've got two different cards producing points based on the amount of paw animals you have. You've got two now, potentially. Maybe more if you can get another stag beetle. Maybe even more if you can get more than one golden eagle, which is a little easier to do because there's three of these golden eagles while there's only two stag beetles. Plus, you're also helping your well-rounded trees with your beech marten. So if you're gonna be adding the beech marten to the paw strategy, the stag beetle and the golden eagle are a must with this strategy. Or if you manage to get yourself a mole, that will help as well. So those are two really good cards that would work really well with the paw strategy. These two cards and the fly agaric, those three cards and this tree are some of the most important cards they're the golden cards of the paw strategy. The golden cards, okay? So silver fir tree is a golden card. And that mushroom, wherever I put it, is a golden card, okay? Those are the golden cards of the paw strategy. These are the four most important cards with this strategy. And like I said, while the hares and the foxes are good to have, they're, and they're like the best cards, best paw, paw cards to have, with this strategy, you're going to want to make sure you have at least a couple of these uh, with the strategy. It, this one's not nearly as important, but these three, 
are the most important. You're going to at least want one of these, and if you can, one of these. Okay? But regardless, this is a, this is, these are the golden cards. Now, with that said, we've talked about some of the paw animals, but there's still a lot of other paw animals that would work well with this strategy. And so that adds the raccoon now into the equation. The raccoon is a paw animal. But when you play this, you get to put any number of cards that are in your hand into your cave. So you're going to get extra points based on the amount of cards that you've put into your cave. But then it, you also get to draw the same amount of cards from the deck. So if you've got a lot of cards that you don't want, that don't work with your strategies, that don't work with the paw strategy, the raccoon here is going to help with that, okay? And it's, you know, potentially going to get you some extra points based on the amount of cards that you just put into your cave. Now, with that said, with that said, since the raccoon is going to be giving you some extra points with the cave, um, another good card that's new to the game is the Bearded Vulture. And this card not only lets you put a couple of cards that are in the clearing into your cave, okay, but it also lets you put, it also gives you one point per cards you have in your cave. So this is going to put cards into your cave, which is going to give you points based on the number of cards in your cave. This is going to score you points based on the amount of cards that are in this cave. And guess what? There's three of these bearded vultures. So hey, if you can get a couple of those, you can get a lot of extra points with the bearded vulture, which means that now because of this bearded vulture, we officially have a brand new strategy that works extremely well with two different strategies. It works extremely well with the paw strategy, and it works extremely well with the bird strategy. Now, while this, this cave strategy still works the best with the paw strategy, the raccoon is, is always going to be a card that works well with any strategy because it's gonna help you a lot. So with that said, these two cards here together are going to be helpful regardless of what strategy you're, you're going for. Doesn't matter what strategy you're going for, these two cards, the Bearded Vulture and the Raccoon are just really good cards in general. But the cave strategy is now a valid strategy and would very much be extremely helpful with the paw strategy, for sure. Probably going to work best with the paw strategy over any other strategy. Now, with that said, we have the bear, the brown bear. Now, the brown bear on its own used to be not the best card for the paw strategy, because it's extremely expensive to play. Not only is it extremely expensive to play, but to satisfy its binocular needs is also very difficult because you'd have to discard three of those leaves and getting three of those leaves has always been difficult for me. But if you can manage to do that, you could get an extra turn and draw a card. But most importantly, you get to put all your cards from the clearing in your cave. So if you play this at the right time, and have those three leaves, you could get 10 cards easy, maybe some more, depending on how, when you play this. Um, and whew, I gotta say, whew, that's a very useful strategy. So these three cards are now part of the cave strategy. And like I said, since this is a paw animal and this is a paw animal, it's gonna help with your paw strategy because it's gonna help you score extra point, an extra point with the golden eagle, and it's going to help you score an extra point with the stag beetle. So having those having those raccoons in the in the equation and the bear in the equation, so the cave strategy and the paw strategy are now actually the same strategy, really. While the cave strategy is just a small little strategy, but it's a very powerful strategy with the paw strategy. So that's how that's going to work. Now, with that said you're going to be playing a lot of cards and maybe you can't go the bird strategy maybe every somebody else is going the bird strategy and they're getting all the best birds right so then what can you do if you're going to play the beach martin into your forest and you want a well-rounded forest thanks to that beach martin's ability or should i say you know it's victory points um what are you going to do what do you what's 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 another potential strategy that you could do for the top of your tree okay What's a potential strategy that you could put on top of your tree? 
that is going to be butterflies because they're cheap okay they're cheap and it, and, it, and and the butterfly strategy is uh, is not the strongest strategy in the game it's probably one of the weakest which is why you always want to play more than one strategy and that's that's the reason but with that said you could potentially play some butterflies for free with your hairs if you've got a mole around so if you've got some butterflies and you've got some uh, uh, hairs, your, your mole strategy will help you play both of those cards pretty easily, right? And that's why the, the butterfly strategy, or a micro version of the butterfly strategy, might be a good card, a, a few good cards to play uh, on top of your trees to help you, you know, get that equation a little bit better for your, you know, your beach marten to, to have a well-rounded forest. But then if that is the case, if you can snag yourself one of these three hedgehogs, you're going to get some extra points based on the amount of butterflies you have. But since it is a paw animal, it will help you get that extra point uh, for your uh, golden eagle and your stag beetle too. So that's nice. But like I said, this is just a miniature version. This is just a, a slightly helpful towards the paw strategy. This card isn't super necessary with it. And if you do manage to have a lot of cards placed underneath your tree, like that fly agaric and uh, the uh, fire salamander, right? Or um, uh, the stag beetle, for instance, uh, underneath your tree, you might have some cards. Then maybe the wood ants would also help with the beech marten and score you, ba score you some extra points based on the amount of cards that you have below a tree. But once, once like I said, like I said, once once again, the wood ant and the hedgehog and butterflies are just a micro idea, a micro strategy uh, that you could work with this particular strategy. So in actuality, the paw strategy is now going to be called the paw cave strategy, okay? Since, since the cave strategy actually works the best with the paw strategy. So that's it for this video. I hope you guys liked this particular video on the uh, paw cave strategy. Maybe I can come up with a better name than that, but that's, that's it for this one. Thank you guys for watching.